Welcome back to Vintage HLC Show and Tell. Today we're going to look at some examples of Lachlan Art China and decorated specialties. And we'll begin with the three chocolate pots. Now these were never given any really fancy special names, they were just simply called chocolate pots. And the two on the right we've seen before. The one in the center has Juno and the one on the far right has Golden Fleece. This one on the left we can see this in a 1903 catalog page. This is the King Charles dinnerware assortment and they have it as item number one. So it doesn't have the typical King Charles embossing or design but it was picked up and used with this set. So this is a rather early piece and here it's seen with these lilac decals. We've seen this on various pieces of art china before as well and we have this gold stamp border and gold trim. The lid is rather interesting. It has a rather thick flange to it and the cutout opening to allow for pouring. And the marking on the bottom is, of course, our gold Lachlan Art China. Now what I don't know is whether these three were offered concurrently. I kind of suspect that one replaced the other and that the King Charles, and I'm going to call it the King Charles chocolate pot, was the first one. That's this one here on the left. And that the more curvaceous one was second and that the simplified one was the last one. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about that, but based on the treatments that I've seen them come in, yeah, I think that that's the order from left to right. The next piece is a Steinur with this eagle and American flags. He's sitting on top of a globe. Uh, we've got brown blended tints. This has the typical Lachlan Art China marking. It probably came with a Stein set, uh, but it's interesting. This particular treatment was used by several different potteries uh, in the early 1900s. Since we have this golden fleece piece out, and we'll look at the marking on this, because golden fleece had a special marking. So we have the Lachlan Art China marking up top, then golden fleece on the bottom. This was one of the last Art China treatments, 1908, 1909 or thereabouts. We have the Tioga Sugar Basket, again with our golden fleece marking. I want to look at a couple other pieces. I've shown you this piece before. This is a Quaker creamer with the uh, golden fleece. And then we have the granite staple celery tray. This comes from 1923. A little bit removed from the era of golden fleece in art china. So I want to talk about Harry Spore. Because I've been referencing these decal books or these treatment listings and the treatment numbers and how they relate to one another. Well, these belong to Harry Spohr, and he worked at Homer Lachlan in the early 1900s. Uh, this comes from a 1926 catalog page, and he is pictured in the back row center. So this man right here, this is Harry Spohr, and he was a superintendent of a decorating department. So we see him listed here, Harry Spohr. And here's his signature at the top. This is dated 1920. So all these treatment numbers of, the, of this era that I've been referencing come from his uh, own books with his own little handwritten notes. So one in particular I want to look at, let's see if I can find it, 1923. He writes in the back of this one, here it is, Golden Fleece, he has a little bit of price scale going on with it, and he says sugar, creamer, teapot, and celery tray. Well, there's the celery tray, and here's the creamer he's talking about, because it's 1923 for this listing. This creamer is dated, let's see, 1922. So the sugar creamer and teapot he's listing here is the Quaker shape. So here's the creamer, so I just need to find the uh, sugar and teapot. But I think it's interesting. That they're using this golden fleece treatment as late as 1923. You know, this is more than 10 years since uh, Art China was done away with, but Golden Fleece just sort of sticks around a little bit. Next we have some calendar plates. And there's nothing really unusual about this one. We've seen this one before when we were looking at fruit plates. We have our Hudson Rose, the 1909 calendar plate. This is a coupe shape uh, fruit plate with our Hudson embossing. Should be marked Hudson on the back. And here's another one with our Hudson Rose with blended tint. So this one is a little unusual. I don't think it's particularly rare. It's just 
or, or very valuable. It's just a little different in that they're using a plaque. Instead of using the Hudson fruit plate, we see the same decal treatment with Rose on this plaque with additional gold stamps. Uh, it's a souvenir piece for a company in Minnesota. And it has uh, the Homer Lachlan back stamp. It also has the holes that are drilled so it could be hung up. So usually when you find a plaque from uh, specialties, it'll have a treatment like white pets or Caledon or, you know, Current or Monk or one of the others. But here it's a little strange to see a calendar plate uh, using the plaque blank instead of a Hudson fruit. Next we have some number three vases. So this one's the current decal, the very common treatment, and this one's Lachlan Blue. They both have the Lachlan Art China marking. A little bit of variation in these. The blue one is slightly larger, has an overall diameter of seven and three quarter inch inches, and this one is seven inches. It's also a little taller. The uh, Lachlan Blue is five and three quarter inches tall, and the current one's about five and a half inches tall. These are not very common pieces, the, uh, the round number three vases. The American Beauty Fruit Bowl. Now, I was talking about this with American Beauty last time, where if you find these pitting or kiln dirt or whatever defect you may see, you know, sometimes that's just to be expected. Uh, and here's a perfect example where we see all this pitting that occurred. There are also some glaze pops on the exterior. You can see them almost like craters. So you have to realize, you know, this is early 1900s. They're using periodic bottle kilns. They're filling up these beehive structures with all these saggers filled with wares. They're sealing it up with bricks. They're heating it up with coal, trying to get it up to temperature, the proper temperature to fire. They're using little pyrometric cones and spying the cones to make sure everything's uh, getting to the right temperature. And then they have to cool it down and wait. Then they have to tear down the brick wall. And then they pull out the saggers. And then they open them up and hopefully they've got something that can be sold. So when they do that, go through all this time and trouble, it's unlikely that if they find something like this in here with this little defect, that they're going to throw it out. It's just too much wasted time and effort and energy. Not to mention that this was casted by someone, that it was dipped by someone. So again, it sort of can be forgiven especially when it's an American Beauty Fruit Bowl, which these are not easy to find. So we'll look at some of the embossing detail. Look at the front of it. It has a nice leaf embossing on the front. It also has a little shell embossing on the foot. I don't know if that's going to show up. Let me try the other side. This particular example is not marked, but it is the proper shape for American Beauty. And then we have another version, a little unusual in that it's got current. So it is marked Lachlan Art China. We see the current decals on the inside and on the outside. This one has pretty good embossing detail as well. Still a little bit of glaze pops on the inside, but again, you kind of have to be forgiving with this early wear. And finally, a Seneca 24's jug with um, some Dutch decals. We looked at some Dutch decals on the Ohio jugs and the Virginia jugs. They were also used on Hudson, and here they are on this Seneca piece. So this is a specialty piece. We've got yellow blended tints. We've got some gold stamps. Uh, the marking. Homer Lachlan Seneca. So that's it. Just a few decorated specialties and some pieces of art china. Um, Hopefully we can revisit this subject again in the future. Uh, next time we'll look at some cake plates, some cake plates from 1910 that are uh, scalloped embossed pieces that we'll try to make some heads or tails of. So that's it for now.